Hello party people, what's up? Welcome, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tori, thanks so much for being here today. For today's video, I thought I would do a really quick unhaul. I've accumulated quite a bit of stuff to get rid of. I feel like I've been shopping a lot, thrifting, buying things online, buying books. So I felt like it was time for me to kind of unload some stuff and give it a new home. And I've also kind of adopted this saying. Um, I got it from Macy Eleni and my friend Emma Lev. And it's, if you give good to the thrift, you're gonna get good out. And so I feel like I have been scoring so many deals at the thrift lately that it's time to replenish that karma. So, okay, thumbnail. This is like really heavy too. It's very filled to the brim. And the first thing I have is this really cute plastic Topshop bag. I honestly had it for a really long time because I didn't have a lot of brown bags in my closet, but now I have my Telfar, I have a couple other options, and I never find myself gravitating for, towards this one. I also feel like this one doesn't really like suit my styles. The next piece I have here is this Chinatown Market and Urban Outfitters collab shirt that I have that I cropped, and I'm just getting rid of it because over the pandemic, it came out that the creator of Chinatown Market isn't even Asian or Asian American, so... I don't need this in my closet. Another green item that I have that I'm getting rid of is this Reformation jeans long tie-dyed long sleeve. I don't know, I feel like I've just like outgrown this and I feel like the camp counselor vibe is simply not for me anymore. These next couple of pieces are pieces that my friend Emma thrifted for me in our thrifting for each other video. And they're just tops that I don't really gravitate towards or I have tops similar to it that I just wear more. The first one is this Style & Co quarter length sleeve shirt. And I think I love this print in an artistic way in like a, I would own it as like an art print way rather than like I wanna wear it, if that makes sense. And then the next top I have is this Worthington top. I love a funky pattern and I love this pattern, but the cut of this shirt, I thought I could make it work for me, but I simply have not been gravitating towards it. So it's gonna go to a new home as well. This next piece is a top that's very similar to the one I'm wearing. And I believe I like found it at a flea market and it is this top. And I love a top that has a lot of print going on, that has jewels. Like obviously I'm wearing one right now, but I think this one is just, I feel like I don't really have trypophobia or whatever that phobia is of like a fear of open holes. But I think this one is, it, it triggers me similarly in that way. So I just like haven't gravitated towards it. I, I don't know. She's gonna go to a lovely home. This next piece I have is one that I've complained about before on this channel. And it is this, I can't even like show it. It's from Nasty Gal and it is this knit top, knit tube top. And it comes with a matching little bolero cardigan moment. And I hate the fit of this so much. This piece is so cute. And I know it's supposed to be a dupe for the Alessandro Rich, Alessandro Rich, Alessandro Rich cardigan and matching tank. But the sizing of this is so weird. The cardigan is way too oversized, but the top like squeezes you like in such weird ways. You're like, how the heck is a tube top squeezing me this way? I don't know. I'm getting rid of it. <laughs> All right, this next skirt is one that I'm really sad to get rid of, but it is this Worthington cargo-ish mini skirt. And I bought it off eBay for like a steal. It was like $10 with shipping, but it just doesn't fit. And I feel like someone is gonna find this at the thrift and like fall absolutely in love with it. It has this really cool cord drawstring at the waist, and it has like this really nice gold detailing, a little back pocket. And I feel like someone could rock this. Like if I if I found this at the thrift in my size, I would like go bananas. So I'm giving her to the thrift store. This next item is another one that I think I got at like a flea um, and it's this Amanda Smith pure silk midi skirt. I originally bought this because I didn't have a lot of pinks and reds and I love a good midi skirt. But for me personally, She's not it, um, unfortunately. And I also just think like because of the way it's lined, um, it's kind of like this double lining situation. Um, when I wear it, it kind of, it just doesn't fit super well. So she's going to the thrift as well. This next item is a pair of pants that I bought from Motel Rocks last year. And it is this pair of funky flared pants. It's like not a denim fabric because it's super stretchy, but 
It's a pant. Um, super nice, like, flare at the bottom. I just don't gravitate towards these pants because they just fit really weird in the crotch. And honestly, buying these and getting them returned was such a hassle. I originally got an extra large, and those were just way too big. I got a large. They fit fine, but they were just, like very ill-fitting still i tried to make it work i tried to wear it with like a lot of like really long pants so it would like kind of hide the crotch i don't think i've ever bought anything from motel rock that wasn't from like a second hand store before so this was like my first experience buying from them and it was like not the best so we're parting ways i feel like that one and the nasty gown one i'm just getting rid of them because i didn't realize how bad the quality had like dropped off in the last few years but yikes Okay, this next piece is a piece that I wore to death and that I kind of want to get rid of. It's from the brand Midnight Rider that I got at Dolls Kill. It has this woman on it. Her titties are out, so I'm gonna hide her. Um, sorry, but it says nudies in this really fun crystal like lettering. She was cute. She went out with me a few nights. We, we like broke her in at Saddle Ranch, but <laughs> she's gotta go. Kind of going on the Western theme, I have this jacket from Real Comfort and it's in this red bandana print. And I honestly just don't wear this because I feel like the bandana print doesn't really go with my aesthetic. I vividly remember like buying this at an estate sale and I felt like just buying something because I was like, I don't want to like say I had gone all the way to this estate sale to come out empty handed, which is like not a great way to think. It's not a great mindset, but at the time I was like, I just want something to like take home and I chose this. Maybe someone will use this for their next costume. Okay, I have like five pieces of clothing left and then we'll get on to books. But this next piece is one that I bought a lot of, I feel like quite a few of these are actually from like fast fashion stores. And I wanted to wear this a couple, I wanna say like Christmas 2020 and I literally have not worn it since. And it's this knit vest from Zara. It has this like really like classic wintry print and I just don't wear it because I don't like the way it falls on my body. I have a very like square torso anyways and this really does nothing for me. It doesn't like crop nice. It doesn't like lay nice on me. And like it's also surprisingly very warm and I live in Southern California. So it's like, when would I ever need a piece this warm? I couldn't tell you, so. I'm going to be parting ways with this. This next piece is a piece that my roommate gave me when she was cleaning out her closet and I was trying to figure out a way to wear it and it is this really fun tank top. It has like this like scalloped detailing and it has a lot of sequins. Can you see it? I think that I've become someone who like has very specific fabrics in mind when wearing tops or wearing any kind of clothes. And like the fabric of this is pretty knit, which is really interesting because it feels like such a going out top. I feel like if it was any other like material, it would be more wearable for me and like more realistic for my lifestyle, but it's not. So I have to part ways. <laughs> Okay, we're down to the last two. The next piece that I have is one that I just talked about in my recent thrift video and I even said in the video, I was like, I might get rid of this because it's very sheer and I didn't realize that. And that is this laundry top. It's like so fun. It's giving pirate chic, Elizabeth Swan and Pirates of the Caribbean, but it's way too sheer for me. You know, I washed it, so it's gonna be fresh when it goes to the thrift store, but you know, you always have to have one dud, especially since I feel like most dressing rooms still aren't open yet. So, bye. And then the last piece I have is this long sleeve turtleneck. And I actually bought this in like my first thrift video ever on this channel. And it is this really fun printed top. I love tops like this because I do love a second skin top. I love layering tops. The print on this, I think, is just really distracting for me. Also, these sleeves are kind of like cap sleeve shoulders-ish, so it was really hard to style as a second skin top. I feel like it's similar to this top where I think the pattern of it and like the size and colors of this pattern, like I thought it was giving like cheetah print. We're parting ways with her as well. I told myself, if I couldn't find a way to style it like last fall to this like spring, I was gonna get rid of it. So we're parting ways. 
So that's it for clothes. Let's move on to books. Let's see how many books we have. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books. We're getting rid of nine books today, which I think is a lot for me. And let's, <laughs> you know, as I've said before, I'm trying to be a book tuber. I've been a little reading girly and my toxic trait when it comes to reading books is that I will just buy them. I will buy a paperback. I prefer a paperback to a hardcover. I'm not someone who utilizes her library, okay? I really should. The only thing that's really easily accessible to me is like apps like Libby or Audible where I can listen to an audiobook. So I have to have a book. The first book that I'm getting rid of is Dune by Frank Herbert. And I was gonna keep this because I mean, I, I ruined this spine because I read it and I was like, this is a trophy. The fact that I made it through Dune, did it take me like five months to read this book? Yes. Did I enjoy it? Sure. Basically, I'm just getting rid of this because I hate this copy. I originally bought this online and it was just like paperback, hardback. And I was like, oh, I'm getting a paperback, obviously. And then I got this mass market copy, which is like the super thick one with like these really teeny tiny pages. And I think if I ever reread Dune, especially for like the second one that's coming out, which kind of deals with like the last book of this book, I want to read one that's kind of more of like the proper book size. The reading experience of reading this book as like thick of a brick as it is was like not enjoyable for me. So getting rid of her. The next book that I'm getting rid of is Never Let Me Go by Kazu Ishiguru. The thing about this book is that I had watched the movie before ever reading this book. I just constantly found myself during this reading experience comparing what I remembered from the movie to what was happening in the book. And because I had watched the movie, I already kind of knew what like the twist of this story was. So basically this story follows three childhood best friends, Kathy, Ruth, and Tommy, and them growing up in this like boarding school and then them moving on out of the boarding school and into like their like young adult adult life. I think it's such an interesting story and I do want to read more Ishiguru. I do have Clara and the Sun on my TBR, but I'm never going to pick this up ever again. It's going to go to a new home. The next book that I have is Arsenic and Adobo by Mia M. Monansala. This is the first and the only cozy thriller I've ever read. It basically follows this girl named Lila who goes home to her hometown in like the Chicago suburbs and helps at her aunt's restaurant. And then when she's there, her ex-boyfriend, who's also a food critic, like dies in their restaurant and like they're accused of poisoning this guy. And I really just did not enjoy my reading experience of this book. The writing is just like, it feels very elementary and I never felt like I was engrossed in the setting or was invested in the characters. The main character just sounded super whiny and I do love like a flawed main character, a flawed protagonist, but she wasn't even flawed in like an interesting way. She was just like complaining all the time. And then also the thriller aspect of this book wasn't even very thrilling. Like I called it like maybe like halfway through this book. Once we like kind of met all the cast of characters, I was like, oh, I know it's that person. And I really wanted to like this because this is also like a Filipino American author, but not for me, unfortunately. The next book that I'm getting rid of is Ghetto Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I tried to read this book and I like just DNF'd it because I don't really like the writing style. It really sucks that I don't enjoy this author's writing style because everyone loves the Brown Sisters trilogy and I know everyone praises the other two more than this one because this is like the first novel and it's kind of like Talia Hibbert finding her footing within the Brown Sisters trilogy but I was not invested in either of these protagonists and obviously especially in a romance you have to care about the main characters because like everything else you like kind of expect cheese in a romance. So it's like, okay, so like the inner lives of the main protagonists have to be interesting enough or like entertaining enough to keep you centered. The next one that I have here is another romance, which I feel like is so loved. And I talked about how much I hated this book in my like mid-year wrap up book review. And it's the Spanish Love Deception by Lynn Armas, which I just found out today in my book club group chat is becoming a movie. And I believe the people who made the Hating Game movie are making this movie. Ugh. I feel like a Riverdale boy is gonna star in it. I was gonna say maybe Austin Butler, but obviously now that he's Elvis and he's trying to like fake his way up to being an A-lister, it probably won't happen. But this book was so bad. I also did not finish this book. In case you didn't know, The Spanish Love Deception follows two main characters, Lena and Aaron. Lena and Aaron work at the same company and 
Lena desperately needs a date to her sister's wedding in Spain because the best man is her ex-boyfriend and for some reason she can't show up alone. So she asks Aaron to go with her and he says yes. I didn't even get to the wedding. I literally DNF'd it before they even got to the wedding. Before they even got to the airport to go to the wedding, I DNF'd it. Both of the main protagonists felt like caricatures of like what a human being is supposed to be. What else? Their banter, if you could even call it that, literally felt as if you gave an AI like a, like a thousand romance novels and you're like, okay, now write a romance novel. But like worse, because I feel like an AI would kind of get it. But you know, listen, Elena Armas does not care about my negative review because obviously, She's reeling in those movie rights. I'm pretty sure that's it for romance novels that I'm getting rid of. The next book that I'm getting rid of is Your Book by Seth Rogen. It's a collection of short stories and I just thought it was really fun. I honestly will never reread the physical copy of this book. I feel like if I ever wanted to revisit it, I would listen to the excerpts on audiobook because Seth narrates the audiobook. So this is gonna, this is going as well. The next book I'm getting rid of is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. This is another book that I really just did not enjoy. I also prefer this story, if anything, on audiobook. So if you've been intrigued in this book, I would highly suggest reading it that way. This book is about a group of people who are taken hostage at an apartment open house by a robber who is robbing the bank across the street. So you get the point of view of each of the hostages, of the robber and the two policemen who are on the scene of this crime. It was a book that I read that I didn't even get to discuss with my book club because I wasn't there. So the next book that I'm getting rid of is a very controversial one. And that is A Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Okay, I've only ever read the really popular Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, which are The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones and the Six, and Malibu Rising. Last year, it was one of my most anticipated new releases. So anticipated that I literally bought the hardcover. Basically, this book follows Nina, who is this like surfing champion girly, and her three siblings in Malibu um, in the 80s on the day where they throw their like iconic Riva family party. I didn't care about a single one of these characters. I saw one of the character twists immediately because I was like, I have read a, a couple of Taylor Dickens Reed books. I know what's about to happen. I did read this book very quickly. I will give it that. It's a very addicting read and I think I read it in like three days. But something about it, just like the way it was written, I did not feel connected to Nina, which is very surprising because Nina and I are both eldest siblings. It painted itself as like an ensemble story, but I feel like you didn't even really get to know Nina's three other siblings. And I do think that the way that Taylor Jenkins Reid wrote about the party also kind of got to me because at the party, she's trying to she's trying to paint this illustration of like how chaotic it is, how there's so many people there, like so many important people. And I was like, I actually don't care about any of the other people at this party. Like you could have just summed up how chaotic it was in like two to three pages or like in a few stories, but she literally like told so many random mini vignettes about so many other people that I'm like, I actually like don't really care. And now that I'm talking about this book, I'm like, should I reread it before Carrie Soto is back comes out? I wanted to love this story so bad and I'm really sad that I don't. <laughs> So I might get rid of her, who knows? Tori, who's editing this? Did I get rid of it or did I keep it to reread? Let me know. So this is my last book and kind of similarly to, to Malibu Rising, it is one that I anticipated, like I hyped up in my brain so bad. And that is Ready Player Two by Ernest Klein. I loved Ready Player One. It's one of my favorite books. The movie is fine, but it's one of my favorite books and it's definitely one of the books that really got me back into reading and I was so excited for Ready Player Two. This came out, I think, in like December 2020. So basically this book takes place like days after Ready Player One. Wade Watts finds out that there's yet another puzzle for them to solve to unlock a different technology that Oasis, the company, has been like hiding. I just really did not like this book because I felt like there was such an opportunity maybe to introduce like new characters or to like kind of have more of a commentary around like tech culture and like fan culture and things like that because this book is such an intersection of tech and pop culture. It really fell flat for me. Wade Watts is like a teenage boy and he is a teenage boy with flaws 
and the way that this book handled it was like very cheesy i don't know i wanted better for this book and i also like while i was reading this i was like trying to predict what was going to happen i was like oh it'd be really cool if like this character turned out to like double cross this character if it was like this this and that and none of that happened and i was like well i actually just thought of like a way better story and i pretend it doesn't exist so so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed um i'm really excited to cleanse my space of some of these things because guess what i've gone shopping recently and i've welcomed more things into my life if you made it this far thank you so much for sticking around if you want to see more of me you can follow me on instagram or on tiktok and i'll see you in the next one bye